Happy Chinese New Year! It's the time of the year again where you can win a grand total of $12 million in the Hongbao draw. What la? Now, obviously, everyone knows that the chance of winning the grand prize is extremely small. But as the saying goes, got buy, got hope, right? After all, isn't it a good idea to spend just a few dollars to potentially win $12 million? And if you can win, you can fire your boss, buy a condo, buy a car, rent a girlfriend, and travel around the world with her. So, in this video, we'll be looking at what are your chances of winning the lottery? Maybe 100%? And whether should you or should you not be playing the lottery? Alright, let's start right now. Before we talk about how you can become the next millionaire, it's important to talk about what's the purpose of lotteries. And no, it's not to make you rich. The whole reason lotteries existed in the first place is to raise money for the government. But, but why not raise taxes instead? Xiao ah, when Singapore raised GST by just 2%, everyone was already KB KBing about it. And that was already considered quite mild. In other countries, raising taxes could cause the government to lose popularity or even worse, cause people to riot. Then how? Governments realized that people hated taxes but liked gambling. Hence, lotteries were invented. Lotteries have existed all the way back in history, where the first recorded signs of lottery appeared during the Han Dynasty around 205 and 187 BC. The revenue from these lottery tickets, called Kino, were used to fund government projects like the Great Wall of China. Lotteries also appeared in the Roman Empire when Augustus Caesar was the emperor because he needed to raise money for the government. This is the same reason why Singapore Pools existed in the first place. And it was a clever idea because on one hand, you get to raise money. On the other hand, you get to curb illegal gambling. And as expected, lotteries work really well. Last year, Singaporeans spent $9.2 billion on sports and lotteries. But that was a record year. In most years, the amount spent is around $6 to $8 billion. Of course, not all of that $9.2 billion goes to the government. Yeah. If that's the case, the government wouldn't have to raise the GST already law. About 70% of the money will be paid out as winnings, 4% used for expenses, 6% paid out as grants. What? Grants? Yes, Singapore Pools contributes back to society by doing stuff like supporting the pandemic relief efforts, distributing items, supporting the less fortunate and needy. Also, fun fact, in the past, the money from Singapore Pools were also used to fund Singapore's first national stadium, the indoor stadium, Esplanade, the sports hub, and the gardens by the bay. So, if you ever invested in Singapore Pools but did not get a return, you can be still proud knowing that you help out with nation building. Majula, Singapore. Finally, part of the money is being paid to the government in the form of taxes, which contributed about 4% of the tax collected last year. But of course, none of us play the lottery to contribute to nation building. We play it to what big big right? Yes, but here's where the story gets dark. There are numerous studies which found that people who usually play the lottery are usually people who are struggling financially. Walks found that the poorer you are, the more likely you will spend money on playing the lottery. This coincides with a 2008 report where it was found that US households that have a low income spend almost 5% of their money on lottery. While in California, a study found that 40% of those who played the lottery were unemployed. And in Michigan, people without a high school diploma tend to spend 5 times more on lottery than those without a college education. Or in simple terms, Lottery is a poor man's ticket, where it preys on people who believe that they can't escape poverty, and the only way out of it is by winning the lottery. Quick pause, new year, new me. Weibo has recently added two new features. The first feature is index options trading, so you can now trade options on your favorite index funds. The second feature is mutual funds trading which means that now you can buy mutual funds and park your idle funds into low-risk funds to earn a yield. In their latest promo, Weibo is giving out $150 cash voucher. To get it, 
all you need to do is deposit 2,000 SGD, buy one US stock or an ETF with a minimum transaction of $100, subscribe to one mutual fund, and buy one US option. All while maintaining a $2,000 net account value for 30 days, and you will receive $150 cash voucher reward. So if you're interested, you can sign up using my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So what exactly are your chances at winning the lottery? Very tiny. Tiny and you cannot tiny. Ya. In order to win the total, you have to pick at least six numbers between one and 49. Then during the draw, six winning numbers and one additional number are drawn. If your numbers match at least three of the winning numbers, ho ho, then you will win a prize. So what is your chances at winning the $12 million grand prize? After throwing in some primary school math, you have about 1 in 14 million chance of winning the grand prize or a 0.000007% chance of winning the grand prize. Okay, maybe you can't visualize a number that small. So here's another way to visualize. Singapore's population right now is around 6 million people. You take that population, multiply it by 2.3. Ah, now one of you guys in that population will win the lottery. I don't know about you, but the chance of winning seems a little low. In fact, the chance of you finding a girlfriend or boyfriend is way higher than that. True story. But let's take this one step further. What if you buy every single combination? Then you will definitely win the grand prize, right? As a matter of fact, yes, that's a very smart strategy. Dollars and cents found that if you were to do that, for every $1 you invest, you would win $76.16. So let's go buy the lottery. Yeah. Hold up. Before you do that, there's a cash. There's always a cash. And that is lottery winnings in the first four groups are shared. For example, in the 2022 draw, the grand prize was a super high $16 million. The good news, someone won the grand prize. The bad news, he had to share it with seven other people who also won the grand prize. So dollars and cents factored this in by using the average number of winners for each group. And they found that when you share the price, for every $1 you play, you will only get back 62 cents. Or in other words, you will lose 38 cents for every $1 you play. GG lo? Now, of course, let's be super optimistic. And let's say you won the lottery. What happens then? You hot be big and live happily ever after law? But is that really the case? Here's where the story gets dark again. According to some data, nearly 70% of lottery winners end up broke within 7 years. Though the source later clarified that this data is unverified. And another source says that most winners won't end up blowing through their winnings. However, it's still true that some of the lottery winners actually do go broke. And those who win big cash prices saw a boost in their life satisfaction overall, but they didn't see a change in their day-to-day -day happiness. That's because of something called the hedonic treadmill. Basically, once you have achieved something that you want, you might feel shocked for a while. But after that, your happiness level will return back to the baseline. In another study of 22 lottery winners, researchers found that the winners actually experienced the least enjoyment from mundane pleasures, stuff like eating breakfast or talking with a friend. So is playing the lottery bad? Yes and no. The sad truth is that for the 99.99999% of people who play lottery won't be able to win. But if you do win, Good for you. The problem here is not about losing money. Everyone is already losing money every day due to inflation, GST, and Tesla. First time, the problem is when you start to trade the lottery as the only way to escape poverty. And you are spending like 5 to 10% of your income on it. And you still haven't become rich after 20 years. Ah, then the lottery becomes a bad thing. However, here's where the lottery is useful. It helps you to imagine what you truly want in life. Some hope to win so that they can quit their job and retire early. Some want the money to start a business. Others want to travel around the world. But even if you don't win, here's a good news. Winning the lottery is not the only way to reach these goals. You still have crypto. Just kidding. 
don't go YOLO into crypto ya, yeah, is another way to become poor ya. Yeah. Instead, there are three simple steps to get rich. Work, earn money, and invest the money. By just investing in a simple index fund, given enough time, you will still end up becoming a millionaire. And the best part, you don't have to rely on luck to get rich. Though, of course, there's no harm in spending like $5 to $10 a year on the Hongbao draw to try to win that $12 million. And that is what I've done. So if you don't see me next week, you will know what happened, yeah? All jokes aside, just know that while it's okay to play the lottery for entertainment, it's a super bad idea to use it to get rich as there are many other better ways to get rich. However, as they say, got buy, got home. But just remember to play responsibly, yeah? Anyway, that's all for this video. Hopefully, you find it useful. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.